afternoon dear students good afternoon dear students today we are going to discuss with bio leaching also called as or microbial leaching and especially we are going to study a microbial leaching of copper and uranium from the low grade ores okay what is bio leaching it's a process of extracting metals or extraction of metals from their ores by using living organisms especially microorganisms okay now usually metals like copper uranium zinc lead arsenic antimony nickel molybdenum gold silver cobalt etc are extracted from their ores by the process of smelting you must have studied in chemistry smelting is a process of heating and then melting heating to a very very high temperature and melting so that we can extract out the metals from their ores metals are present in combination with some other you can say compounds like sulfur or something else in their ores and we have to extract out the metal so that is generally done by smelting but uh, smelting is not profitable or commercially viable when the ore from which we want to extract the metal is of low grade okay so smelting is not economical when low grade ores are present the ores which contain very low quantity of metal or low concentration of metal in that case smelting is not economical at all because the whole process is very costly right however the ores which contain low concentration of metals or the ores which are of low grade can be used okay can also be i mean uh, or rather you can say metals can be extracted from these low grade ores by using a process called as bio leaching or microbial leaching where we use microorganisms to extract out the metal okay so what are the advantages of bio leaching the process is economical okay bio leaching can extract metals from ores that are too poor okay low grade ores too poor for other technologies hence increase the profit okay so when low grade too poor ores which are already lying as it is can be used okay they can extract out metal from them by by the process of bio leaching and hence it increases the profit it also partially replaces the extensive crushing and grinding that translates prohibitive uh, prohibitive cost and energy consumption in a conventional process okay actually conventional process requires too much uh, of energy consumption crushing grind, grinding say or heating melting and all requires too much of energy consumption okay then steps to control sulfur dioxide emission during smelting is expensive which is not required during bio leaching so it is it is an economical process and that too we are going to extract the metal from a very low grade or a poor ore the process is very simple bio leaching in general is a very simple process and therefore cheaper to operate than the traditional process we don't require any skilled operators and all it is eco friendly it is environmental friendly the process is more environmental friendly than traditional extraction methods because bacteria involved in the process of bio leaching grow naturally and the uh, in the mine and surrounding area is left relatively untouched okay but there are certain limitations of bio leaching it's a slow process okay bio leaching is a very slow process as compared to smelting that's one number two pollution toxic chemicals are sometimes produced in the process of bio leaching sulfuric acid and h plus ions that are formed can leak into the ground or surface water and turn them acidic <laughs> ultimately leading to environmental damage so some kind of uh, environmental pollution may occur because of release of toxic chemicals so we have to take care that the setup of bio leaching must be carefully planned okay uh, because it can lead to bio safety failure so keeping in mind the bio safety measures we have to plan uh, the setup of bio leaching at a place which is not going to cause any harm to the surrounding uh, locality or to the surrounding area okay now bio leaching is brought about or microbial leaching of metals is brought about by microorganisms in two ways either by direct method or by indirect method direct method is viewed as a process by which components within the bacterial membrane okay or the microorganisms interact directly with the metal and sulfide moieties of the mineral by using an enzymatic type of mechanism here microorganisms are directly brought in contact with the metal or their ores and sulfide moieties of the minerals by using some some kind of enzymatic mechanism and then the metals are extracted out indirect method 
But in case of indirect method, microorganisms do not interact directly with the me uh, ores, metal ores or their sulfides. Okay, rather it refers to a chemical attack by ferric ion or protons on a mineral sulfide that results in the dissolution of the mineral. Okay, so indirect method involves chemical attack by ferric ion or proton. Okay, so what actually acts on the ore or the mineral sulfide is the ferric ion or the protons. Okay, then iron oxidizing microbes are actually involved, I mean, uh, involved here, but they convert the ferrous iron into ferric iron. Iron oxidizing microbes use the ferrous iron as electron donor and they reoxidize it back to ferric iron. So conversion of ferrous to ferric is brought about or to regenerate ferric iron, we use microorganisms. So microorganisms, iron oxidizing microbes act on ferrous iron and convert it into ferric iron. Right. For that only we use microbes, right, in indirect method. Actually, the mineral sulfide or the ore is acted upon by ferric iron. Ferric iron in turn chemically oxidizes the metal to be recovered. Okay. So it oxidizes the metal to be recovered from its ore. So here we are going to study bioleaching of copper by indirect method as well as bioleaching of uranium by indirect method. Let us first discuss about bioleaching or microbial leaching of copper. Now the calcopyrite, here we are going to study extraction of copper from the ore calcopyrite. Okay, calcopyrite, chemical formula CuFeS2 is a commonly used ore for copper extraction. Here copper is present in reduced form. As a general principle, ferric ions are used to oxidize copper compounds present in the ore. Okay, so what we do is ferric ions are used to oxidize. Here copper is present in reduced form. Now we use ferric iron to oxidize copper compounds present in the ore, where it itself gets reduced to ferrous iron. Okay, so we have calcopyrite ore where copper is present in reduced form. The calcopyrite is treated with ferric iron, that means ferric sulfate. Fe2SO4 thrice, okay, it, it is acted upon by ferric sulfate where the ferric iron, Fe plus 3 iron, oxidizes copper. But when ferric iron oxidizes copper present in the ore, it itself gets reduced to ferrous iron. So ferric iron is converted into ferrous iron, okay. And CuFeS2, this copper gets oxidized and gets converted into CuSO4, okay. The oxidized copper compound is a soluble compound. Okay, here it is present in reduced form and in insoluble form. As soon as ferric iron oxidizes copper, it gets converted into soluble compound. It comes out easily from the ore. From this soluble copper compound can be extracted in pure form. Okay, so the oxidized copper compound is a soluble compound. It comes out easily from the ore. This soluble copper compound, from this soluble co copper compound, copper can be extracted out. This whole process does not require the action of microorganisms, okay? However, in the next step, a special group of organism is used to regenerate Fe plus 3 from Fe plus 2. And the two-step cycle is repeated. So what is the first step? Oxidation of copper metal present in reduced form in its ore that is brought about by ferric iron. And ferric iron get converted into ferrous iron. So it's a non-microbial step. You get copper in soluble form and the soluble copper compound can be used to extract out the metal. This whole process is not at all involving microbes. So where do we use microbes then? Microbes are used in the second step where Fe plus 2 is reoxidized to Fe plus 3. To regenerate Fe plus 3, we require microorganism and this two-step cycle is repeated again and again to extract out the metal. What are the microorganisms involved? Lactospirillum ferrooxidants or acidothiobacillus th thiobacillus thiooxidants. Okay, this acidothiobacillus thiooxidants was formerly known as thiobacillus thiooxidants. These are the two common organisms commonly used for bioleaching of copper from its ore. Okay, what leptospirillum ferrooxidants does? Leptospirillum ferrooxidants is acidophilic organism. It is gram negative, spiral shaped, aerobic, obligate, chemolithotrophic, ferrous iron oxidizing bacteria. Okay, so it oxidizes ferrous iron into ferric iron. Okay, 
ferrous ion oxidizing bacterium. It fixes carbon using ferrous ion as their electron donor and oxygen as the electron acceptor and possesses nitrogenase encoding genes, right? The second organism, acidi thiobacillus thiooxidans, formerly called as thiobacillus thiooxidans, is a gram-negative rod-shaped bacterium which utilizes sulfur as its primary energy source. It is mesophilic bacteria, okay, and grows at an optimum temperature. It has optimum temperature of 28 degree Celsius. So both any of the two bacteria can be used for, uh, you can say, oxidizing ferrous iron into ferric ion, converting Fe plus 2 into Fe plus 3. Okay. Now, the whole process of biolithium of copper is divided into two steps. Same is the case with uranium. Uh, it is divided into two steps. Number one, step number one, non-microbial step. step. Step number two, microbial step. What happens in the first step? The solution containing ferric sulfate, FeSO4, uh, sorry, Fe2SO4 thrice. The solution containing ferric sulfate is sprayed on the low-grade ore filled in a column. See, the low grade ore like calcopyrite can be taken in the form of a heap. We can have a heap of the, uh, uh, you can say, ore, calcopyrite, or we can fill the calcopyrite ore in a column, right? But heap method is more practiced in the field, right? So the solution containing ferric sulfate is sprayed on the low grade ore that is calcopyrite filled in a column instead of column, a heap of ore is preferred and we spray ferric sulfate over it. Now, the copper which is present in the calcopyrite, CuFeS2, gets converted into copper sulfate. Okay, so when you spray ferric sulfate on calcopyrite, the copper present in the calcopyrite gets, see this one, CuFeS2. Fe2SO4 thrice is ferric sulfate. Okay, ferric sulfate is sprayed on the surface of calcopyrite. What happens then? The copper here is converted into copper sulfate. Okay, and a ferric sulfate is reduced and converted into ferrous sulfate, right? So copper in the calcopyrite ore gets converted into copper sulfate, while ferric sulfate undergoes reduction and gets converted into ferrous sulfate. Okay, now the liquid coming out of this column contains copper sulfate, which is a soluble compound. This copper sulfate uh, containing solution, which is a soluble compound, is sent through a trough which contains ion filings. Okay, so the liquid coming out contains copper sulfate, which is a soluble compound. The liquid is directly sent into a trough which contains ion filings. Here, copper sulfate reacts with iron and formation of elemental copper takes place. That means copper from the copper sulfate is replaced by iron. So CuSO4 okay, gets converted into FeSO4. Iron replaces copper readily, right? And copper metal or elemental copper is separated or removed. It is that easy. This copper, which is insoluble in nature, is now allowed to get precipitated in another trough. Okay, so it easily precipitate out in another trough. The copper is removed from the trough and it can be further purified. Okay, so this is how we get the copper from the low, uh, low grade ore. Now, the second step is a microbial step. Here what happens, uh, in the first step, uh, ferric sulfate is reduced to ferrous sulfate, so it cannot be used further. So in the second step where microorganisms bring about the conversion of ferrous sulfate into ferric sulfate, that means you can say that organisms like leptospirillum ferrooxidans or acidi thiobacillus thiooxidans oxidize ferrous sulfate back by a into ferric sulfate. Okay, So ferrous sulfate is oxidized back to ferric sulfate by the action of microorganisms in a tank under conditions that are favorable for the growth of microorganisms. So the solution containing ferric sulfate is now pumped out of the tank, right? First, uh, the fer uh, ferrous sulfate is passed on to a tank and in the tank are present, say, leptospirillum ferrooxidans. Under proper favorable growth condition, leptospirillum converts ferrous sulfate into ferric sulfate. Now the ferric sulfate is now pumped out of the tank and it is used to spray back on the calcopyrite ore as described in the first step. And we go on repeating the cycle. Okay. You can see here, this is the low grade ore which is coming into the column. And this is the leached out ore, right? Okay, the ore which comes into the column, right? Into the column, what do we spray? Ferric sulfate, Fe2SO4 thrice is sprayed on this. What happens when you spray, you look at this reaction. 
okay when you spray fe2so4 thrice that means when you spray ferric sulfate ferric sulfate oxidizes the copper present in the chalcopyrite ore and cuf from the cufes2 what we get is copper sulfate it is solubilized and ferric sulfate gets reduced to ferrous sulfate okay so out of the column comes what what comes out of the column after you spray ferric sulfate ferrous sulfate and copper sulfate right now the copper sulfate this solution is passed into a trough which contains iron filings so what will happens immediately iron will replace copper and what we get out is again feso4 right so and out of the cuso4 copper has been removed and this copper is then passed on into a trough where it is separated by precipitation whatever solution comes out is actually containing only feso4 this feso4 where iron is present in reduced form is filled into a tank inside the tank are present the organism leptospherulum ferrooxidans under proper growth conditions leptospherulum converts feso4 into fe2so4 thrice that means ferrous sulfate is converted into ferris, ferric sulfate so we get back the ferric sulfate this ferric sulfate can now be recycled back and it is sprayed again over the incoming ore and this two step cycle is repeated and we go on regenerating the ferric sulfate by the action of microbes and the ferric sulfate reacts with the ore gives you cop elemental copper and the whole two step process is repeated and copper metal is extracted out the ore is placed into the reactor and water pumped through on continuously uh, uh, pumped through on a continuously recirculating basis as shown here like this so this is the ore it may be cufes2 like chalcopyrite and so any other ore can be used from the pump ferric sulfate is sprayed over it as i told you so what we get is copper sulfate and ferrous sulfate copper sulfate is treated with iron and you get elemental copper gets separated the ferrous sulfate is all filled into this tank it is acted upon by leptospherulum ferrooxidans or acid thiobacillus ferrooxidans which oxidizes ferrous iron into ferric iron so ferrous sulfate is converted into ferric sulfate it can be recycled back and used to oxidize the copper present in the ore so this whole cycle is repeated and we get copper in a form okay so that is all about bio leaching of copper in the next we will study bio leaching of uranium